we're on the north side of the church and forgive me for not appearing in front of the camera but in order to do so I'd need to uh, suspend myself from the ceiling and we're looking at a window that dates from 1881 uh, and it's by the stained glass firm of Mayor of Munich and we met them a little bit earlier in the writing when we were looking at the west window of the church. There's a number of windows by that company uh, in St Stephen's. This window though depicts not a particular person, not a particular saint like some of the others, or even a scene from the Bible. It depicts rather uh, a whole group of people or various groups of people. And they're the people who are contained in the Te Deum. The Te Deum is an ancient canticle, an ancient hymn of the church, written in about the fourth century, we think. And it's used in the liturgy of the church in the uh, offices. The offices are those services which are set for particular periods of the day, which uh, are offered in church clergy are uh, obliged to say morning prayer and evening prayer every day and the Te Deum, this great canticle of praise to God, is uh, prescribed to be said on feast days and solemnities at morning prayer. So here we are looking at the characters who are mentioned in that great hymn of praise, the Te Deum. I'll read a little bit of it for us uh, from the Book of Common Prayer. We praise thee, O God, we acknowledge thee to be the Lord. All the earth doth worship thee, the Father everlasting. To thee all angels cry aloud, the heavens and all the powers therein. To thee cherubim and seraphim continually do cry, Holy, 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 Lord God of Sabaoth. Heaven and earth are full of the majesty of thy glory. The glorious company of the apostles praise thee. The goodly fellowship of the prophets praise thee. The noble army of martyrs praise thee. The holy church throughout all the world doth acknowledge thee, the father of an infinite majesty, thine honourable true and only son, also the Holy Ghost, the Comforter. So here in this window from 1881, those groups of people who are mentioned in the Te Deum are depicted. At the top, there is Christ in glory, with those great throngs of the heavenly host gathered around him, singing the hymn of praise, Holy, 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 Lord God of Sabaoth. Then directly beneath, there is uh, in this window a typo. Because beneath that it says the glorious company of martyrs. It's not the martyrs it's depicting at that stage, but actually it's the apostles. So it should say the glorious company of apostles. But they're uh, a little handful of them reminding us that the church is apostolic that we're built on the foundation of the apostles, that the apostles' teaching is the touchstone for unity in the life of the church. Then in the bottom left-hand corner, there are the martyrs, and they're carrying their martyr's palm. Amongst them, we can see St. Stephen carrying the stones, which were the cause of his martyrdom. Martyrdom, of course. Uh, the word martyr means witness, so we think of their witness to Christ through the manner of their death. Directly beneath the apostles in the centre, we get there the prophets. The prophets, that great company who standed God's presence and speak God's word, God's message to all people. We think particularly, I suppose, of the prophets in the Old Testament. We think of them, don't we, in the season of Advent, particularly as they prepare the way for Christ, people like Isaiah as a voice crying in the wilderness. But 
prophets of our own time, prophets who speak the truth, prophets who um, speak God's word, even though it might sometimes be uncomfortable to hear. So we think of the prophetic witness of the church. Uh, and then on the right hand side in the bottom corner, uh, the Holy Church throughout the world doth acknowledge thee. And there, I suppose, there's some representative figures of the life of the church. We can see a couple of bishops and a couple of uh, people from the religious life, monastic people, so a couple of monks there. And of course, as we look at that window, we are drawn into it. We recognise that we are part of that great company who are joining in the praise of God. As we stand looking at the apostles, the martyrs, the prophets, the witnesses of the church throughout the ages, we recognise that we too are part of that company joining in the praise of God.